representation with application to caption, and which will be presented in CVPR this year. And this okay, so the most important motivations of this paper are um, that there, there are several methods have been presented for being able to represent videos or sequences of images. And some of them are these, these four proposals. The first one is to use some technique called uh, VLAT to aggregate different um, from different frames. And in that case, we're extracted with a convolutional neural network. on the top of the RTP frames and trained um, jointly uh, a content a content and um, with all these these kind of inputs. And another one was to use 3D uh, contents. That uses um, that that Frames as an another, but the problem is that all of these things have some kind of, of drawback. For example, it does not have any kind of temporal information. It just aggregates different frames that might be from different and capturing different times, but it just fuses them without taking into account the time. The, um, the, the most important problem is that it's expensive. To, to, to calculate the optical and about the 3D connects and they usually are only trained for 16 consecutive frames which means that which means that they only work for short video clips and training them with a lot more frames would be very very demanding and then about the long short term memory units they have been they have proven to work pretty well but they usually well it's it's said um, that they only work really well for medium length clips. So um, they pro their proposal uh, tries to overcome all these all these problems. And um, basically, what they is this different architecture, and that is called here applied in, in a different way. And uh, what is long clip that, that might have um, some overlapping um, frames. And with these chunks, and um, these chunks are fed separately into the first layer of the LSTM. Then later you will see a, a, a picture of this. And then, uh, well, the, one of the benefits of you doing this is that you can apply several non-linearities, so um, consecutive layers of LSTM but you reduce the computational load because you only use the, the final output on the final time step of each chunk as the input to the, sec to the second layer. So you don't use all the outputs for each time step, but just the, the, the last one of each chunk. And, and then another benefit is that um, it follows the natural layered, let's say layered understanding of normal videos. So for example, if we if it's a birthday party, um, we can see the, the actions of blowing candles, cutting cake, and eating cake in this in this order. So this this way of processing it in chunks and in this order um, is more or less aligned to, to this way of representing of the usual um, way the videos are represented. And the basic unit that they use in the in the in their method is the long short term memory unit. And this, well, this is the, the usual representation of this unit, although we, the number of inputs can vary sometimes, but um, this is the one that they use, and it basically has as inputs the, um, the feature vector of that precise time step, which in this case will usually be the feature vector of, of, of a given frame, and then the other input will be the hidden state of the previous time step. So the output of the LSTM unit on the previous time step. So what it does is that um, it takes information calculated previously and adds new information with the new frames. And these units, um, all of them have 
this this different these four different input gates. And they are usually called the input gate, this one, because it modulates somehow the the input information. Then the output gate that it modulates the output um, hidden state and the forget gate that modulates the 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 cell information the, the memory information that is stored inside of the of the unit. And um, the um, if, if we use two two inputs to the to the LSTM, this is also the usual formulation that, that is used. For the input gate, um, usually a sigmoid is applied and we, have, we learn two different matrices, one applied over the, the X, the future vector, and the other one applied over the previous the, the previous hidden state. And this is um, the, the same procedure is applied for the forget gate and the output gate, but here learning a different set of, of parameters, so a different different matrices. And then here in this case they call um, this this first gate, they call it G. And um, they use the hyperbolic tangent instead of the sigmoid. Um, as I said, there are many variations of these units, but well, usually they, they use something like this. Um, and then finally, what they use is to uh, they they compute this is the pairwise um, multiplication, sorry, the elementwise multiplication of the for gate gate and the cell in the previous time step. So what is stored in this in this, in this cell inside the, the, the LSTM. And they sum this to the multiplication of the input and the, the, G, the G gate. Um, and finally, they use this C multiplied by the output gate to obtain the final, the final, the final hidden state of that time step. And then, well, we will have another frame that will be inputted. We will use the previous hidden state, and we will do again the same. If you have the image, so from the image, we try the features that are the XK. So all these, the W, they are matrices of parameters that should be loaded by the LSD. So when you have the image, so the input gate is input because it is receiving directly information from the from the from the image and it is modulating the input to the cell. So we have the input gate depends on the previous stage, H T minus one, and the image features, H T. Both are vectors. The range vectors. The vectors that are coming from the people. Like for example CNN or yeah, any kind of features. So they are multiplied by the matrices and B are biases. They are another vectors that are that are should be learned. So we have the input gate that is modulating the, the X. So in the into the cell, it is centering the input gate, right? That is that is multiplied by P. P is well, yes. Do you mean so, this or? Yes. So we have the. So in this case, this is the G T. They call it G T, and this other one is called I T. And in this, this operation is the the element wise product. So, sorry, this one. So this so, operation corresponds to this one. Yes. And they sum this to this other multiplication to form the next cell, the next memory state. So, so in the cell. in the cell, it is centering. Uh, the input modulated by GT plus the forget that is coming from the forget gate modulated by uh, the CT the, the C that will be from the previous cell. That the, uh, the state of the cell from the previous yeah, it's cell. This, that's why it's this, this arrow. And then, then we have the final stage H will be a uh, product of the output gate, output gate is modulating the output of the cell. 
And well, if you look for for LSTM on Google Images, you can find several um, things, but they will have some variations. And so, well, as I was saying, this is the basic unit that that they use for for their proposal. And um, well, here what they do is to compare their proposal, which is the one at the right, and with what would be a, a, a simple stack to, to a two layer to the last layer. So in this case, for example, um, this is the first layer of LSTMs, and this is the second layer. Okay? And um, in fact, here we only have two LSTMs, this one and this one. But what they usually do is to represent the time, like um, duplicating the, the architecture. So this is just the input of the first time step, which is applied to the first LSTM and to the second LSTM. Then this is the input of the second time step, which is applied to the very same LSTM, but with a different hidden state. And then to the second LSTM again. So we only have two LSTMs, two layers, and this is represented for all the, all the time steps. So in our case, it would be for all the frames in the, in the video. And well, what they say here, and this is the final hidden state of a D equal. Yeah, the red line here comparing this normal two layer architecture. They say that, in fact, when you. Um, all the LSTMs in all the activities. But in their case, um, they get chunks of data. In this case, are chunks of three samples. This is the first chunk, the second chunk, and the third chunk. And they only use the output of the last element in the chunk. So, so the what they say, the yeah. So what they say is that in their architecture, the same um, sample goes through less units. So they need to compute less, but the result is even better because um, it only captures the, let's say, the essence of the of that chunk of data, and you don't need to, to get through all the all the samples. So they, here the, the line is to represent that they need to compute to, to make less computations. Okay, so they are dividing this in, in chunks of three in this case, and they just use the, they just fit. The, the output of the of the last time step to the next layer. And then, well, they also argue that, that the representation is somehow similar to the convolutional neural network. For example, in this case, this is what a convolutional neural network would do if we have this image and we apply it this filter. So in this case, um, when the filter is applied on this zone, on the green zone, we will have as an output this pixel right here, that one. Then it will happen the same on this blue zone, on the yellow one, and on the orange one. So it's just um, subsampling the image. It's um, like reducing the dimensionality and just capturing um, the information of, of some precise zones. And what they say is that in their case, if we suppose that this is the the features of each of the frames from t equals 1 to equals t equals n or t. And then when they apply their first layer um, to the first chunk, to the yellow chunk, they will obtain just one output. And then they do the same to the, to the orange chunk, to the blue one, and to the green one. So they are like reducing the information and just focusing on on summarizing the information of that chunk. And then they apply the second layer here. Um, and well, this is the basic, basic architecture, but then they say that they, um, in their final proposal, they incorporate also um, what is called as a, an attention mode. So I didn't um, include any slide here specifically. 
But basically, what the attention model does is that um, if you have um, features from different frames, then it uses the output of the previous LSTM. Yeah, so that the previous LSTM gets a hidden state, and it uses that to select which frames will be the most important for the next time. So it, in somehow it, it focuses its attention to what it thinks that will be more important for the second factor. And what they do is that they incorporate um, in their final models like this. And well, this represents their HRNE, their proposal. And what they do is that they introduce an attention model in, in between the two layers and also an attention model before the final LSTM. So all, all of them are temporal. Yeah. So both of them weights for different frames. Yeah. The second one weights the chunks. Yeah. And the third one, right? okay. Well, they didn't give details about this. They just say that they use three attention models, and um, one before the first LSTM, one between the two LSTMs of the HRNE, and one before the decoder. Attention model is just uh, introducing weights for the frames. So for example, yeah, if, you, if you do an activity that is jumping, so not all the frames have the same thing. So you should probably focus on when you are up and when you are down. So, so the attention model just introduces the weights to the different outputs and the effects. Yeah, for example, if we've got a video where a man is jumping and the description of the video is that is a man is jumping, then, and for example, when it's going to output the word man, it will probably focus on a frame where the man is clearly visible. But then, when it's going to generate the word jump, jumping, it will focus on a frame where it's the man is clearly doing the action of jumping. So that's what, in theory, what it should do. It should focus on the frames more useful for generating the next one. <laughs> so, and when we say focusing, it's um, weighting the feature vectors of each of the frames, giving weight, more weight to one, some of them, or less weight to others. And well, and they didn't explain this in detail, but what I understand is that um, they divide the data in chunks, and well, with this, a lot of chunks, they they somehow they, they create this, this this architecture. And um, well, about the tests, they apply apply them to these two different data sets. One of them is the Microsoft Video Description data set. Which, uh, which is um, composed of videos of, from YouTube and short clips. And here you can see some examples of, of them. And then the other one is a Montreal video animation data set, um, which is from um, movies. So we have short videos of movies. And in this case, in fact, um, well, we have been working with these two, two data sets, and each of them has a different problem. Let's say the first one. The, most of the sentences are, are quite simple and quite generic. So from the one side, it is good because it is easy to obtain relatively high um, measures, scores. But then um, when we want to do it very well, it's difficult to, to, to get a very high score. And on the second one, the problem is that most in most of the cases, the description is too precise. And it, um, it, it takes into account things that the, just looking at the images, you can cannot you cannot guess. So, for example, here in the first one, it says someone sits on her roommate's bed. So you can see that someone is sitting on a bed, but who knows that that's her roommate's bed? And here you can see a man putting something in his car, but you cannot. Um, well, usually maybe you will not describe the license plate. So it's difficult in that sense. And um, well, they apply first some tests just using features on frame level. 
So for, in this case, they just want to compare the methods without taking into account different kinds of features. Um, and from this point of view, you can see that, well, the, the two most important measures that are used in this case are called me Meteor and Le. Well, this is Le when considering um, sets of four words, four consecutive words. So this is the, the most important columns are this one and this one. Should say play. what is Meteor and yeah, well, a Meteor, what it does is, well, I don't have here an example, but um, what it does is to compare. If we have a ground truth sentence and uh, the, the, the sentence predicted by the model, what it does is to compare n-grams. So an n-gram is a set of, of n consecutive modes. So if, if we're comparing four grams, which would um, be to compute the layer, the layer four, and we get the four, the four first words, and we check if they appear exactly as they are in the, the reference sentence. We then get the next um, four consecutive words, and we compare again if they appear in the reference. So we just count the n-grams that appear in the, in the ground truth and in the predicted um, sentence. And for the meteor, um, it does something similar, but at the same time, it uses some information about synonyms and about the, the similar words. So I, I'm not sure about the details of this, but I suppose that if here, if it says pool or swimming pool, the score should be similar. Um, and in that case, um, most people say that Meteor is more robust than that. They say, for example, this, and they say that they focus on, and they consider that it's most, it's the, the most important result is the, the one from Meteor. And well, as I was saying here, just comparing their method without attention, and from the Meteor point of view, it is better than the rest of the methods that they compare. And if they are the they have the attention mechanisms, it's even better. It improves one point. Um, but well, we must also say that although it's not as good as the Meteor one, the Ble, um, it looks like in this case, um, it's not as good as that other method, the VR. And then they also compare the same, but uh, using the all the kind of features that the authors used in, in their respective papers. So in their case, they only used features extracted from Google. Mm -hmm. But for example, in this paper, they used features from the BCG net concatenated with features from the, the uh, C3, uh, uh, C3D uh, network, which is a 3D network that computes several frames at the same time. And in this other case, they use the Alex net, for example. And well, um, although um, we could say that their features are less powerful than if we add 3D features, we can see that even being less powerful, adding the attention model, um, with respect to Meteor, it's even better than, than the rest of the method. It's still better. But if we compare Ble, we can see that it's far below them. So mm, what well, is just um, a detail that I'm not sure how important it is. We should check some, some sentences and compare if it's really important. But although the idea is good, I think it, it's not so better compared to, to, the, to the rest. Um, yeah. But well, probably if they use 3D features, if they don't have 3D features to the model, I suppose that they would improve the result. I suppose. And just in Meteor, because in Blair it's six points below. And Well, they only com compare, they, they only use the net, they just don't compare it to other. That's what they focus on their architecture and not on the kind of, on the kind of features. And well, they 
then apply the same comparison, but on the data set of, of movies. And well, here they only report the meteor. I don't know why, but they just use meteor. And well, in this case, it looks like um, it's in, well, one point better than the, the second approach. And considering that this data set is so difficult, so I suppose at that point it's, it's pretty much. And well, here you can see some examples. I don't know if you will be able to see it over there. But and well, they compare the ground truth, which is the third line, to their model without attention, the first one, and their model with attention is the, the middle line. Uh, for example, um, on the, the the video of the dog, the ground truth is a dog is swimming in a pool. Their model without attention says that a man is swimming in the water. And if they have attention, it's a dog is swimming. And then another example is the, the one in the, um, the middle right, that the ground truth is a mango is being sliced. Their model says a person is preparing an egg. An egg. And the, when they have attention, it's a woman is peeling a mango. So, and well, here in these examples, we can say also that the attention seems to help very much. But we cannot. Mm, we cannot say that, well, if we don't have any other um, comparison, we cannot say that their method per se is better than, than the other ones. And well, some conclusions. Some conclusions about the authors is that, um, well, they say that their, their model reduces the length of the input information flow and, and exploits the temporal structure at a higher level. And then they, they are able to apply, apply more non-linearities non and flexibility than normal LSTMs. And they exploit the transitions, transitions of the videos with multiple granularities. So as we said, they, have, they use different chunks, and then they process them on a higher level, mixing the chunks. And those are the granularities. And well, my conclusions, um, I think it's it's a good method, it's simple but good. But well, as I was saying before, um, although Meteor is more reliable, um, it's not, I don't know if it's, if it's that the method is, is that good if we compare and um, take into account of that. So as we said in, in, the, in the tables. And then also, I suppose that they could test um, adding different additional features like, um, see 3D features and to see, to compare more fairly with other methods that are using them. And also maybe it would be helpful to to use a bidirectional HRNE, so doing the same but on the backward, so using backward information from the last frame to the first one. And also, well, given that they compare their method to the CNNs, I don't know, but maybe it would be worth applying like some temporal max pooling or some operation like the inceptions layers that are applied to the Google Net. Maybe mm, there, there would be some possibility of applying this, this kind of operation that would be there as well. And that's it. Yeah, let's see the LSTM. And they usually, um, what I've seen is that for the initial values of the cell, they just used like the mean of the input data. So they initialize it for the weights. They initialize the weights to, to they use a normal, centered on zero, and with a small standard deviation. And for the, the value of the cell, it's just the mean of the data. So you get all the training data, you apply them in, and that will be the, the first, the C, D minus one, will be the main of the data. Okay. Um, 
virtual MRT testing. Suppose that it's uh, lighter than other methods, so it can be used for real case applications, but other than it's expensive and can, uh, can only go for narrow variety of wide frames. But uh, is it like a big improvement in this, uh, in this, in this area? Yeah, well, they say that it's less expensive than our methods, um, but they don't give details about it. Okay. So I would like to know also if it's really less expensive, or because from the one side, well, they, they on the one hand they use just the output of the last element of each chunk to the second layer, but they also apply chunks with a stride, with an overlapping stride. So at the same time, they are processing the same image several times. So I don't know to which extent it's really less expensive. Though. I don't know. And, uh, the other thing is, how, how long are usually the frames that the really shows? And uh, how, what is the framework? I understand that they are taking, they are taking video in this case, and they are separating different frames of the video, and they are taking which frames are the most like ones to, to do the to do the attention, the attention. Uh, how, I mean, uh, how many, what is the distance between the video frames? Yeah, well, they say um, that uh, all the in all these data sets, uh, the videos are, are pretty short. Okay. And maybe just one or two minutes or more. And what they say is that they just use the first 160 frames of the video. If they have more, they just discard them. And if they have less, they apply, they pack them with zeros. So they get the 160, but first 160 frames? Uh, yeah, the first one. Just, well, yeah. And then about the attention model, um, it's not, well, they don't weight the, the frames directly, but um, they are dynamically weighted. So what it's time step, I can wrote it here, but I, um, there should be, I don't know where do they get it from, but um, for, for the attention model, there usually is the, the output from one STM, the state state, is inputted Okay. 
which the propaganda CM at the previous time. So in this architecture, I don't know which of the LSTMs we use for as of that term, but and they don't specify. But this is the application LSTM. So they just apply the paper body pencil and this this people that they they send the LSTM and these are six some other variables that must be So they get this analyzed each, and they just apply the stop map like this. Yeah, so this represents um this represents the first layer of their of their LS, of their eight RNA. So they say that they apply two layers. The first one is applied over the chunks separately and they call it the chunks. So they divide the data in chunks. In, in, in sub clips, in sub videos. Yeah. Um, And they, they, in fact, they call this layer like a filter, right? similar to the CNN. It's to one chunk, they just get one output vector. So you, it's like this. They apply it to all the chunks, to all the frames in that chunk, and, they, mm -hmm. and they, they just get one output. And then this output on the second layer is fed to the second layer. It's like this. Like, yeah, in fact, this is applied temporarily. So this is the first, uh, this is time equals one, time equals two, time equals three. So it's not applied at the same time, one by one. Yeah. 
I'm not sure. They even recommend this. Yeah. So because basically the 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 that you are not yeah, this is, you can work with different sequences, right? So now when you divide it, so you basically So that if you take time very small, then you get a strong value to start the problem from the human family. So they have to be able to do that. So you think that can be Well, I think that they fit it, but the problem is that you have more time. There is a lot of computer activity. One of the other things is that it's a concern detection. When the, there's a few changes in the scene, uh, usually the, that's considered black. The information from the video can be removed. That's here, it is not that. It's only taking like a different frames. So if, if, if a frame is static, the size of a final video is very, very low. If there are very little change in the video, but when there's a huge change in a, in a scene that someone hears or something is moving or the indentation the changes, then the, there is a peak on the, on the, on, on the path. Mm -hmm. So maybe the chance, the size of the chance can be determined by the this yeah, variation yeah. on the inside the scene. So that's if you have a mocking standing inside the scene, then uh, that's considered the same chain. And if something different will suddenly then it will be yeah, maybe you can just use the differences on the picture in the picture vector. Yeah. Is there yeah. different? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they say to stack at the LSTM, yeah. Yeah, just in this case it's just yeah. a two layer. Yeah. Okay. Have you got any other question? No? Oh, not here. Sorry? I'm saying not here. It was a good presentation. Thank you. That's Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay, so bye. Bye.